Hi guys, Chris here. Now you can see I'm shooting from a different location here. So I'm not currently in Spain. I'm back home in Auckland, New Zealand on holiday, but I will be checking out a few devices. So I have this right here with me. This is Xiaomi's Mi Gaming laptop that I've been testing for the last couple of weeks. Now this is the second edition. I reviewed the first model that was released that had the seventh gen Intel chips in it. This now has the eighth gen ones, which they should have released to be honest, to begin with. Now it has the 8750H in here, that's six cores, 12 threads, and it has a maximum turbo of 4.1 gigahertz. It's a powerful chip, it's also quite a hot chip, and we will check out thermals on this, and most importantly fan noise, which I didn't like on the first model. It was a little bit too loud, and spoiler alert, it is still too loud sadly on this model. Now the RAM is slightly faster, it's double data rate 4, it's 2,666 megahertz now instead of 2,400. So it's a very marginal increase there. Now my model is configured with the NVIDIA GTX 1060 with six gigabytes of VRAM. There's also a cheaper model that has the NVIDIA 1050 Ti. So apart from that, we also do have faster wireless. It's got Intel's wireless AC, the gigabit chipset, which is the 9560 and a much faster SD card reader, which is now ultra high speed one spec. Gaining access to the internals isn't difficult. We've got nine screws to remove, and one of them is hidden under this rare rubber foot. Now the internals have not changed from the first model. They have not redesigned the cooling. It looks exactly the same to me. We've got a 55 watt hour battery right here. So it is smaller because I've given us space for a 2.5 inch hard drive and another 22 by 80 NVMe times four drive, which I have installed at the moment for the purposes of this review. I've also swapped out the one terabyte spindle hard drive. Both the GPU and the CPU coolers, these fans here, are capable of 6,250 RPM, which is really fast, but that also means the laptop, when in that cooler booster mode, is extremely loud, but more on that later in the review. As far as upgradability goes, we have the SSD drives and also the RAM that can be swapped out. And I see no reason to do this at the moment with 16 gigabytes of RAM. That should be good for most people, but you can install a maximum of 32 gigabytes. Just above the Samsung PM981 SSD, we have the wireless card. Now you cannot upgrade this one, unfortunately. It's not replaceable. It is an Intel 9560, and that is wireless AC and it also handles a Bluetooth 5. Along the front, you will find two three watt speakers. They're downwards firing. They're decent sounding ones, but not quite as good as the Mi Notebook Pros. I will give you a sample of the speakers again later on in this review. So Xiaomi have kept the design plain and simple. There's no Dragon logos. There's no gamer accents on this whatsoever. No gamer red, no logos on the top. I do like this look. It's simplistic. It means you could even use it say as a business laptop. And you'll notice along the top, we do have this strip. And this strip is for improved wireless reception. And in my testing, it does seem to have very good range on this. So no problems and no issues with wireless speeds or reception. The lid has very little flex, so I don't see this pressing in and pressing that screen up against the keyboard. On the right hand side you'll find one exit vent, USB 3 port, and then our new faster ultra high speed one spec SD card reader. And then on the left another exhaust vent, two USB 3 ports, 3.5mm audio out with very good quality. It's loud, it's very clean, there's no static, no interference, and we also have a dedicated mic in. Finally, for ports on the rear, we have DC in for charging. We have a USB 3.1 Type-C, which sadly is not Thunderbolt 3 spec, which is an error because the competition, the likes of Dell, they're offering this HDMI 2.0A spec, USB 3 port, Gigabit LAN, and we have those two exhaust vents on the rear. So for the keyboard, we've got no changes here. We've got 1.5 millimeters of key travel. It's a reasonable keyboard to type on. It's RGB, we have three color zones. And the software is now in English, thankfully, which it wasn't when I first reviewed the first model. The power key isn't separated away from the rest of the keyboard, sadly. Now, I wish it was, but at least it does have a higher resistance to the rest of the keys, and this does prevent accidental key presses. The biggest con for me, however, is this right here, your five programmable macro keys. It's just the location of them. I do find it quite annoying. Often when I go to hit control, I hit the macro key here, or when I press escape, I'll accidentally hit the hyper fan mode. And the macro keys are very easy to program with the included software.
Now with this RGB keyboard, we do have five different levels of brightness, so you get a little bit of control over that. And of course you can set it to whatever color you want. There's different things like breathing, mode, you've got wave, pretty straightforward here. And that's all controlled and tweaked again via the Mi Gaming Center software. The software also lets you check out your CPU load, GPU load, memory use, and it even does have a built-in task manager, and you can take a look at your network performance as well. And just like the first edition, no changes here, we have the ambient side lights. So you've got 16 million color combinations there that you can set with the side lights. And just turn off those lights and you can see it there. And also when the laptop is fully charged, they will glow green. So there are no changes to this touchpad at all. And that is a good thing because this is a great touchpad. The Mi Gaming Laptop and the Mi Notebook Pro, which use the same touchpad here, they're both excellent. It is really good for the finer movements, very accurate, smooth surface. And it does support, of course, Windows gestures. It is definitely one of the best touchpads you will find on a gaming notebook. So overall, the Mi Gaming Laptop has a premium design, a very high build quality, and it's great. No faults with it whatsoever, no build quality issues, and I love the fact that we don't have that gamery design here. This is very simplistic, the design. We only have that Mi logo on the front. That's the only logo you will find on the whole laptop. So the display is still a 1080p 60 hertz display. Now I know some people will be disappointed in Xiaomi's decision not to go to 120 hertz panel, but since it's only the Nvidia 1060 that we have on here, it's not the 1070, and really I feel it's an okay combination. We don't have the super powerful graphics card. So it is a 300 lux screen, and it does have an anti-glare coating on here. We've got an sRGB value of 93%. Adobe RGB is 72%. So very similar to the first panel. It is a good panel, good color reproduction, and that brightness, 300 lux, and being an anti-glare screen, I find is also perfectly fine there. My only complaint with this screen is there is a bit of light leakage just down there on the bottom but it's very hard to see. You really just need a completely black image to see that light leakage, and it will vary from panel to panel. So overall, for a gaming laptop, this has an above average screen in it. And when looking at the screen bezels here, so either side are quite slim, and the top, of course, they've got the webcam in the correct location. Webcam 720p with a status LED to the left of it, and then either side dual array microphones. And now a sample of that 720p webcam. It shoots in 30 frames per second. Now you do notice with the quality that, okay, the exposure seems to be all right. I have reasonably bright lights on at the moment, but it does look a little bit pixelated. It looks a little grainy. The audio is above average, perfectly fine, I feel, with those dual array microphones. And the audio you are listening to right now is being recorded on the Xiaomi Mi Gaming laptop. So one of the problems of buying a laptop from China and importing it is this right here. It's going to come with Windows 10 Home in Chinese, unfortunately. Now, there are a couple of ways around this. You can install and do a complete fresh new install with English, or you can upgrade to Windows 10 Pro and then install your language packs. So this is one thing you have to remember. And the other, of course, is that you're not going to have a local warranty. Checking out a few synthetic benchmarks now that I like to test out. When it comes to Firestrike 1.1, the NVIDIA GTX 1060 gets a graphic score of just over 11,000 with a total score there of just over 10,000. And it's on par with other GTX 1060 notebooks. And what is slightly higher here is the Geekbench CPU score. So when we have a look at the single core score for Geekbench 4, it's close to 5,000, which is... Maybe not the fastest I have seen, but the multi-core score here of over 21,000 is really quite good. This is faster than the MSI GL63 that I have looked at, and it is also faster than the ASUS FX504 that I looked at. It's the highest yet out of the gaming laptops that I have reviewed. And when we take a look now at the OpenCL score with Geekbench, this is a very decent score here. And if you do overclock the GPU, which I have managed to do a little bit, I'll just show you my overclock. I managed to get plus 160 megahertz to the core clock on the GPU and the memory clock a respectable plus 700 megahertz. Doing so has increased the scores here with the Geekbench 4 OpenCL score 
around about 6.5%, so it's not much of a boost, but anything we get here is really welcome when it comes to, of course, a gaming laptop, and it doesn't increase the temperatures much at all. Barely goes up one or two degrees when you overclock that 160 megahertz on the core. And when it comes to Cinebench R15, again, this is one of the highest scores I have seen for this particular CPU. So we've got a CB score of 1145, and if you do undervolt a little bit, which I managed to get a stable negative 0.160 undervolt with both the core and the cache, then that does help boost up our scores here. As you'll see now, that's increased now to 1200, and 63 CB. The Passmark 9 rating is 5664, which is a very decent score for this particular spec of laptop. And the internal storage, that Samsung PM981, which is basically like an OEM 970 Evo, is very quick as you can see here. We're getting very good sequential reads and writes. Uh, the 4Ks aren't quite as fast as I expected. Now I did populate that spare NVMe slot that we have in here with a light on 256 gigabyte drive and you can see the scores from that one. So that proves to me that both of those slots can run together at PCIe times 4 speeds which is great. And then a very welcome change here with that SD card slot. So on the first model it maxed out around about 23 megabytes per second sequential reads and writes, and you can see it's much faster. This was my Samsung Pro 128 gigabyte micro SD card that I had in the slot using an adapter, and very quick. So good reads and writes on the drive now on the slot, should I say, thanks to the Realtek PCIe card reader they are using. So the CPU, that 8th generation i7-8750H is no slouch, so you can run multiple tabs, you can do all the multitasking you want, and this thing just does not slow down. It's very responsive, it's fast, I'm even editing a 4K video here in the background. You're going to have no problems, there's no real need for me to go into extreme details here on the performance, because this is right up there, this is very fast chip for a mobile chipset for a 45 watt CPU, it does run really quite well. Now I'm going to run a 4K demo here just to show you how this runs. I'll stick that on the 4K quality and we'll put the stats on for nerds. And you can see that it's not actually dropping any frames whatsoever. Now this is running perfectly fine, not a problem. So I do have a 4K clip here. This is actually of a gimbal review that I still haven't posted that I recorded in Denya. And as you can see that the previews there, that's in real time. So there's no problems with that, as you'd expect for this CPU. Now I'm gonna encode now one minute of footage and we'll see just how long this takes. This is in the H.264 format. It's the YouTube 4K preset. And to make it fair, because I know a lot of people are going to be using this now, that most people will stick with hardware encoding. So it is going to be very quick. We'll see how long a one minute clip takes to encode. Okay, so that is just finishing up now. I will hit pause once that disappears. So one minute 22 to encode one minute of the YouTube 4K preset video, which is very quick. Audio wise, the Mi Gaming laptop here, the sound is good that you get from those dual downwards firing speakers. I don't like the location too much because you can end up covering them if you happen to use it on your lap, which most people probably won't. So the sound reflects up off surfaces like desks and you do get a decent amount of volume and you also have a little bit of bass there, some good mids. Overall, the sound quality for a gaming laptop is not bad at all, but it could do with a sub. Now the 3.5 millimeter headphone quality is very good. It's loud and it is also clean. There's no static, there's no interference. I'll give you a sample now of those speakers at 100% volume. So after all, this is a gaming laptop, it's time to check out just how well it performs at 1080p on mostly high settings.
So fan noise is one area that I highly criticize with the first model and sadly it's not any better. This is still a very loud laptop when gaming. It gets up to around about 67 decibels but I'll give you a sample of it now with your normal gaming, your fans on auto and then using the hyper boost, the boost fan mode. Taking a look at the maximum temperatures, so the CPU gets up to around 87, 86 degrees when you're gaming. When you're not gaming, it tends to hover around the mid 70s. I have seen it peak at 93 degrees, but that only happened once. So just above the keyboard, it is getting up to 41 degrees, so it is warm to the touch. And then the GPU maxes out at 71 degrees. That's after one hour of gaming, and I haven't seen it go over this. So the GPU temps are perfectly fine. The CPU can get a little hot at times. So what about the battery life? It only has a 55 watt hour battery as I pointed out when we had a look at the internals. And that is good for up to about four and a half hours of mixed use. This is around 40 to 50% brightness on only the integrated graphics. Now when you start gaming, you're only looking at about one hour and 45 minutes of gaming time. And to fully charge the Mi Gaming laptop, it takes just under two hours. So it is very quick to charge. Okay, so just to recap here, we've got an excellent build quality. It's really well put together. We've got a metal uh, lid on the top here. We have a plastic palm rest, but it's very solid. There's no creaks, there's no flex in this design. The keyboard is good to type on. However, I have a personal complaint with it. Uh, for my own typing, on this, I don't find it to be that good. It does take a lot to get used to, as I mentioned, because it has that extra column of keys. Now that column on the left there means I do get a lot of typos. I tend to accidentally keep hitting the fan, the hyper fan mode, the fan boost mode instead of escape, and you really do have to adapt to it. It's a little bit more crammed in because of that, and I really wish that Xiaomi would change this and perhaps put those macro keys in a different location up the top here. The display is good, about 300 lux maximum brightness, and it does have good color reproduction as well. For a gaming laptop, they are normally quite poor. Touchpad as well, very large, great touchpad actually. Gaming laptops, they normally skip on the touchpads, but this one, this one's really good. Performance, gaming performance. It is a gaming laptop after all. You can play all the latest titles on mostly maximum settings. Now, some of the more demanding games like Witcher 3, we get an average of in the 40s. So you wanna lower it from the very high setting, just lower that down a little bit or tweak some of those more demanding settings and you're gonna get a really great experience there with gaming. Now you can output via the HDMI because it does have HDMI 2.0, run this in 4K. However, the 1060 is not really demanding enough, which is why I don't miss having say 128 Hertz option. If that had one of those panels in there, it would be great, but not a lot of games will be able to take advantage of say running everything at 120 frames per second because of those more demanding titles. Older titles like Counter-Strike, for example, Counter-Strike Source, yes, that maybe then be, could be good for that. So when it comes to cons, it's like the first model. The problem I have with this unit here is that when you're gaming, so just a typical kind of game, uh, it's just far too loud. So you wanna have a headset on to try and drain out that fan noise, which hovers around the 57 decibel mark. Now, when you put the fan boost mode on that most people will not be gaming with that on at all, it's extremely loud. It gets up to 67 decibels, uh, which is really far too much. But again, most people will not actually be using that. So when it comes to the price of this, it has been selling for as low as 1200 US, which I feel is fine when you look at the spec of this. There are cheaper options out there, of course. If you live in the US, you can take a look at the uh, Acer seri series. There's lots of notebooks from there, they're a bit cheaper. Azus, MSI, things like that. So they've got a lot of stiff competition out there, Xiaomi, but they're heading in the right direction. I hope with the next model of this, they can take a look at the cooling. The cooling's fine. It doesn't run into any thermal throttling. It doesn't get too hot, but it's just that fan noise. I really wish they could tone that down. Apart from that, it is a very decent notebook that is a little on the heavy side. So it's about 3.15 kilos with the power brick and without it about 2.75 kilos. So it is a heavy gaming laptop. Thank you so much for watching this review and I do hope to catch you back in the channel and apologies for the lighting and the sound. I'm not in my normal location. Bye for now.